No. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group bi-weekly meeting uh, of October 16th, I think. <laughs> um, welcome. So I'm going to share my screen so we can all see uh, the notes. Okay. So, all right. Cool. Um, so, uh, if everyone could uh, put the name on the list of attendees, um, and is someone can someone volunteer to take notes today? I, I was the last one. So, <laughs> anyone else? It's, it's, it's just it's just for us. I mean, to start, like when people are speaking, just just taking notes. I think Andrea has the, the right face to do it. <laughs> it's not, uh, I mean, it just, just to reiterate uh, each person. I can try, but I, I'm with um, a lot of windows open, but I can try. <laughs> uh, uh, if your Zoom crashes, uh, there will be a new leader elected. Uh, but uh, um, uh, but while while the person is is presenting, uh, it's out, you don't need to, to to write notes. It's just for for the discussion parts and questions that that may arise at the end of each of each uh, uh, person. Cool. So um, all right. So I'll start. Um, uh, so the, these last um, last two weeks uh, were mostly filled with preparation for protocol protocol lab protocol uh, uh week and ipfs days which happened in glasgow last week so some people are still recovering from uh, jet lag uh, for that and a lot of interesting discussions uh, mostly uh, um, on the ipfs days um, um segueing into the discussion of uh, uh, persistent strategies for um, peer star uh, related um, applications a lot of things were discussed there's a bunch of issues on on peer star app uh, well there's one issue uh, on mental request on peer star app and a lot of uh, talks with Adin and Dirk is not present here um, can someone there's someone with a microphone if they can mute it I'm hearing sirens it should be, yeah, sorry. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Uh, that and uh, I've been working on uh, JS Delta CRDT. So um, the, the, there is this issue where only primitive values uh, are uh, uh, unique in, in JavaScript. So the set value uniqueness is based on that uh, JavaScript uniqueness. Some people complained about that and rightfully. And so uh, right now the strategy, there's a pull request waiting to happen. The strategy to use the hash value of the object to determine uh, the, the key for that object for being unique in, in a set. And this has implications on multiple different uh, CRDT types. Uh, the ones that implement sets and the ones that use a dot set uh, for implementing some some CRDT. Uh, so there's a like a, the, there's a, a discussion also happening here uh, for object uni uniqueness. If you want to chime in, if you have uh, an opinion, uh, your uh, opinion is appreciated. Right now, the strategy is uh, like I said, use a hash value uh, for for that. Um, and so I'm. Um, hoping that someone will uh, review it. Uh, I tagged uh, Andre Cruz to review it if you have time. Um, also, um, anyone that is interested may, may chime in. Uh, also, um, some other work on PeerStar app, uh, which is uh, work that I was doing, uh, starting doing on last call, uh, which is to gossip peer addresses uh, in, um, event, in a strong eventual consistent manner. Um, I'm mostly a work in progress uh, and I'm at the phase of adding unit tests for membership and discoverability so that things are, instead of testing this using uh, integration tests, I'm going to isolate this into uh, tests that are specific for, for membership 
and simulate all the the dependencies uh, outside of uh, of the the thing that we're testing. And my plan for next week is to continue on on these two, um, and most probably it uh, most strongly on finishing the gossip peer uh, gossiping the peer addresses in a correct way. And that's it for me. Any question? Um, yeah, I got a question regarding the um, the uniqueness um, mm -hmm. that you talk about the sets. Um, so you said you, you're using um, some kind of function that hashes an object and computes the the the, the value for it and you use mm -hmm. it as an identifier of the the entry. Mm -hmm. uh, are you planning on adding? Um, a feature to customize that behavior so that users can specify uh, the ID themselves? Yes, so if you, um, there's like, this is a, con a convention uh, that I introduced, which is documented. Uh, if the user specifies, it says it's an object and the user specifies the hash code uh, attribute, um, so we're going to use that instead to signify the, the key for the, for the object. Uh, on primitive values like uh, integers and, and strings and booleans, I'm still using the default behavior, which is the value yeah. itself is, is, is the hash code. Okay, cool. Uh, so that means that the hash codes must be serialized or, or yeah, it must be serialized and, and be part yes. of the CRDT themselves. Yeah. Uh, the hash code is, um, so the, 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 the hash code is, yeah, in that case, hash code would be the part of the, the value that's embedded on, on the serity itself, correct? Okay, just one minor thing. Um, did you think about um, the user making the hash code property non-enumerable non so that it doesn't appear um, in, in console logs and, and stuff like that? And if so, have you thought about um, when you're deserializing uh, the state that uh, is being replicated to also put it as enum enumerable, or is just uh, that I'm complicating stuff? As, uh, just by saying that. No, I was uh, thinking about that, but the, the thing is, is the the, ser the marshalling and marshalling strategy that we're using right now uh, doesn't support that. Doesn't support. Uh, um, um, doesn't encode that in in <laughs> in the serialization. Um, I'm not sure what. What solutions could could be there if you can think of of one that is uh, usable, uh, or just just be like blunt and if there's a hash code, we just make it non enumerable and. and mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I just uh, raised that that up because usually people uh, don't use that uh, property for uniqueness. They use something like ID or, in my case, CID and so on. Um, so people have to put that property into the objects themselves, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually people put put them uh, non enumerable so that don't they don't really belong to the object and is being used just by by a peer star to to identify the items. But it's something that uh, you we can discuss afterwards. Isn't yes, it? there's also other strategies I've been thinking of, like a user provided function, a hashing function, for instance. Yeah. So make that it cool. less convention based and, and more uh, more customizable. Uh, so yeah, just just chime in into the discussion. We'll we'll factor this this uh, okay. into, into the. You know, yeah, I, I will um, comment on that. Request. Yeah. Okay, so I think I think it's me now. Uh, yeah. So, just uh, any any more questions about about this stuff? No. All right. So, okay, Andre. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for 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 everyone that that doesn't know, I'm working on Discussify, which is a decentralized app um, where you are able to comment on uh, any um, site. Um, I'm developing um, an extension for Chrome and Firefox. So uh, in my previous, uh, during these, these two weeks, I've uh, concluded um, ref the refinement of the application itself, including, but not, not limited to, uh, to a refactor that I've made uh, so that Redux that I was using in the background script as well as the slices themselves. And the slices, by slices I mean the sidebar, the authentication, um, the, main, the main script that uh, has the, the, um, the D on the bottom. Um, 
so those slices don't use Redux anymore. They use um, uh, a, a React, a React uh, component that connects to the background script and pulls the state continuously and, and, and listen for the state changes as well. So the Redux is only, is only uh, on the background script now. Um, this is this has simplified simplified a lot of things. Um, I've also completed the update and remove comments um, feature in the UI, in the user interface. Um, I've set up the peer startup uh, library in the in the background script. Um, so if if uh, you guys remember in the last in the last call, um, I was in doubt. Um, I had my doubts regarding the, uh, the IPFS um, being incendiated in, in each tab. Um, and we settled on um, having just one, one peer startup instance and one IPFS instance running on the background script. And I've, I've set up uh, that. Um, and also uh, some minor pull requests that I've made uh, on peer startup. There's an, an example app that shows the counter and a discussion tree and, and some other CRDT type, CRDT types. I've um, fixed the example app because it, it wasn't running. And um, by fixing, I mean, I upgraded to create React app version 2.0 and fixed some linting errors that was preventing me from pushing the code. Um, that's it. Uh, in progress, um, I'm currently working on the CRDT data model for the comments. Um, I, I, it's highly based on the on the example that Pedro has made um, on the example app, which is called the discussion tree CRDT, I think. Um, but I need to add support for updates, removals, and also the history. Uh, that means that whenever you edit and remove, um, it's easy to to get. Uh, those entries from the CRDT so that we can display an history of changes uh, in each comment. Similar to how GitHub shows uh, whenever uh, the user edits the comment, you can uh, go there and see the history. You will also be able to, to do that. Um, and that's it. And for my next steps uh, after this uh, is to implement the replies in the user interface. I've skipped this one and, and went through into the in, into the CRDT data model first. Uh, I need to implement the show history in the user interface that will use the history that I've mentioned. And also I will I will hopefully add persistence uh, of the data based on the work that um, uh, Pedro, I know Pedro and Jim and, and I think Dirk as well are, are, are working on the persistence layer. So hopefully that will be easy to, to add um, on Discussify as well. Um, and I think that's it. Is there any questions? Yep. I have one question. Uh, well, just kind of um, more of a comment. Um, so the this this Redux part I think is really interesting. Uh, probably there is some uh, collateral uh, open source uh, uh, potential here, um, and also potential for all the the, the part that you're doing peer star app on the background script because uh, I seen that you're uh, going to support multiple collaborations oh, and, and then stopping and starting the 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 peer star app part. Um, so I think there, there there's the, the potential for not right now probably but but in the future to sp spawn off some things that will make life easier for for developers. Our app developers that is, either is Redux or, or require this decentralized model of 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 not having multiple uh, IPFS instances on, on on different tabs if they're they're using a either a service worker or well service worker not exactly but. Uh, a background, a background uh, script. Uh, yeah, that was. That was yeah, more this problem, this problem regarding the IPFS instances, um, it's not only related to extensions. Uh, it made just more evident. But uh, if you think about uh, if you, using IPFS on the on the web uh, right now, um, you will have. Uh, at least one IPFS instance per tab, and that's that's not really um, 
the way it should work. It should work just by having one instance. That's why there is the, the extension uh, where you uh, can use the, your daemon that is installed, is installed on your computer. And that's the only instance running. But uh, of course, that will require users to have an extension. Um, and I think, as I, as I told uh, in, uh, in some previous meeting, um, there's a working group that wants to tackle that by using um, um, a bridge. So essentially, when you're using IPFS on each tab, it, it isn't the IPFS instance itself, it's just some proxy to a service worker running on uh, IPFS uh, domain. And it, it behaves like one, but it isn't uh, the, the IPFS uh, instance. It's running just a, a one instance per browser. That's the real, the real deal there. And, and hopefully the working group uh, responsible for that. I think it's the browsers working group will uh, eventually on the next um, quarter tackle that. It's not uh, scheduled for this quarter, but hopefully it will be soonish. So yes, the, the, the service uh, worker gateway um, pattern is, is, is uh, I think, a really interesting one. The thing is that we don't, Pierce our app is not supported on that model because we're using a custom protocol. Um, but if yep. they can, can provide, like, if you can, like, push for, for supporting custom LP2P protocols, on top of that of that uh, proxy model, I think uh, uh, we could uh, use that. Um, yeah, even even if it doesn't support, we could like if it's well done and configurable, we could uh, deploy our own IPFS with a custom protocol on some different on some other d domain like um, a peer star uh, domain, mm -hmm. and use that instead uh, for all the peer startups. Or if, or even js.ipfs.io, yeah. um, like like currently uh, you you have that there. Yeah. Um, cool stuff. All right. Uh, any more questions for Andre? Just uh, just to finalize, I will I will push uh, this um, weekend and the next one to have the um, the CRDT data model ready and stable, so that we can. I present that on um, on um, Mozfest, which uh, which I will attend with Pedro, and we'll give a, a talk there. So hopefully, I will have this this sorted out and, and ready to be presented there. Nice. All right. Uh, good stuff. Uh, now, Adin uh, is 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 new to Protocol Labs and this working group. Welcome, Adin. Um, could you introduce yourself and, and yeah. this group? Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, so I, I just started with uh, Protocol Labs last week. Um, I'm in the Boston area. Uh, have been working on encrypted real-time collaboration for like four or so years now um, in a, like a desktop environment, right? So like integrated into your file system and so like Word and, and PowerPoint and that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be working on, for now I guess we can call it multi-writer IPNS, but basically this idea that somehow I need to propagate changes to multiple, I need multiple people to simultaneously be able to make changes. Uh, and have one of them not clobber the other one, as would happen right now with IPNS. Uh, the current model that I'm looking at, after talking with uh, a few people last week, um, including uh, Pedro, uh, Stephen, and, and Cole, uh, are um, basically leveraging the fact that we already have a group of people, because we're using encryption, a group of people that we want to share with, and using those encryption keys uh, as sort of your peer IDs to go find people. Um, the idea being you already know who you're sharing with, so why don't you just use their peer IDs to identify the nodes and set up a group on your own instead of using pub sub and broadcasting out. So for now, I'm just trying to understand and get a grip of the Go libraries and, and libp2p and get all of that working. Uh, and once I can get a basic group up and running, then I'll start putting together the uh, the protocol for how I want to propagate, uh, you know, propagate the updates and and sort of synchronize the different graphs uh, so that you don't have to keep keep quite everything. 
Um, so you may, you may expect some, some showing up on various, uh, various threads. Um, I know I just got referenced on, on one of the threads that, uh, Dirk is working on and there's, there's another thread. There's like an, there's another, uh, another thread uh, from the Go library that's, that's coming back from about a year. So uh, trying to help move those things forward um, and hopefully bridge a little bit between the Go side and the JS side. Yeah, so uh, any, any questions? Uh, I don't have a question exactly, but uh, that's great news that someone's working on this. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. And um, I was involved with implementing some bits of the, uh, the Go version of IPNS, so feel free to ask any questions. Excellent, thanks. Yeah, I'm really excited to see you working on that. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, interesting to see. So trying to bridge the gap between, between IPFS itself and, and having some of this uh, Collaborative things uh, potentially go into the the infrastructure itself of IPFS is quite exciting. I mean, yeah, like one one of the, the one of the uh, one of the the report, reports I'm looking at is under the like the Go Flood sub library that started in like October 2017 is when the is when the request started. So some of these problems have been going on for a while. So knowing that there's like a few people that are involved that I can reach out to for resources to help try and actually pull this thing somewhere is is uh, really good. So expect to be bothered. Super. And and just just as a side a side thing, uh, uh, there's a, a bunch of things that that uh, are potentially going to allow us to converge more to the PFS infrastructure. So I already mentioned in the I think last few calls, rendezvous protocol. Uh, which was also discussed in last week, uh, the evolution of the rendezvous protocol, uh, which is uh, something that will uh, replace the DHT for discover discoverability, so for discovery, uh, service discovery, peer discovery, app discovery. And it will be, uh, as the last discussion, uh, it will be a federated protocol, so you can have multiple of these discovery, uh, not well-known discovery endpoints, and so they they don't that's not not a unique point of failure and uh some discussions over how to prevent some types of uh, attacks also in it so the protocol is not closed itself but it's uh, it's um uh it's uh, it's very good to, to know that it's act, uh, actively being uh, worked on uh, and and the other one is also a uh, circuit relay with with that so we can have like uh, the not required uh, WebSocket star or WebSocket anything or sorry or or um, um, WebRTC star for instance and just being being able to uh, relay and find out through the the circuit relay that is going to be provided by well known uh, well discovered discoverable peers on the network potentially using also the rendezvous protocol for finding. Uh, those those peers that are able to relay uh, that will help the JS side of, of things where where we need to we're very limited in discoverability we're very limited in well in the browser uh, at least very limited in discoverability very limited in in how to connect uh, to each other so this is exciting also that bridges the gap and allows us to converge more with the global IPFS uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so, no one more questions for Dean? No. All right. So, Andres Souza, you're up. I think it's Jim first, or right? I can go. I, so. Um, Sorry, I'm looking at the order of the of the notes. So, oh, no, go oh. ahead, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'll just move my block up. No, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's probably me. Okay, um, so before I went to Lab Week, uh, I fixed. I had a bunch of fixes in the, the, the tree I'm working on for the PeerPad Nano, and I put them into the PeerStar app, and uh, Pedro fixed the, or merged them in. They're mostly sort of really sort of blatant sort of bugs, so they, they weren't they weren't challenging like the design of anything. So I think they're pretty easy to to put in. 
and then uh, spent the whole week in uh, Glasgow at the All, All Hands uh, Protocol Lab Week thing. And uh, I, I gave a, a presentation that should be recorded where I demoed the PeerPad Nano and the little, the little peers. Um, and there's still some bugs. I was digging into it, and I, I noticed I was getting like hundreds of messages per second, even when we were just sitting there idle. So I, it, we did some experiments and turning off the, the pinning peers I had set up. So those seem to be causing it. I think there's some sort of cascade happening. So I'm going to. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to look at this week. And um, beyond that, I just wanted to do a little bit more work on the sort of be able to have a little bit more observability into what's happening with the connections because that's where all the crazy stuff's happening um, and maybe sort of like define it a little bit more so I can maybe document it a little bit more so I can sort of tell when it does this is it supposed to do that or was that what the design was um, and then uh, beyond that I think uh, probably I'm, I'm very curious about this rendezvous protocol and uh, what we're going to do for that. So, and also uh, the stuff that Dirk's doing with the pinning and we had some discussion before about how should stuff be persistent, persisted in IPLD. So, so cool. Any questions for Jim? If I, I, I have, I have not, not a question, just, just a uh, yeah, comment of a comment again. Uh, for uh, the, the pinner may be surfacing a membership cycle, membership override cycle on, this, on the membership CRDT, which I think mm -hmm. I kind of det detected it. That's why I resorted to, to go into the unit tests for the membership and trying to isolate this. I think uh, uh, if I conclude my work in time, you may also have your bug fixed if the cause is, is, is the membership. But I, mm -hmm. I encourage you to, to dig into more into exactly why probably mm -hmm. those will be membership gossip uh, messages yeah. that, that you're getting. I'm almost sure. Yeah. But, uh, but you should, yeah. should check that. I think I'm going to actually show some representation of the CRDT in the UI so I can just see if something's happening there. Yeah. Yes, you should see uh, the, the reflection, you should see the inside the, the membership CRDT, there's a bunch of vector clocks and you should see the vector clock count like going up really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, that's at least what I, what I saw on certain occasions. Uh, so um, if, if that's, that's the, the, the case, just ping me when, uh, and we can work, once you detect the cause, we can work through if that's the, the, the cause. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for Jim? So it's my comment. Cool. cool. So now is Andreas Souza. Okay. So for this week, I was focused more on PeerPad uh, in terms of UX and UI. Uh, this is the uh, on Crypt, CryptPad. It will be presented all my OKRs regarding the topic number five, which is PeerPad. So I created a live demo with it, which I will display afterwards uh, regarding the, um, some, some details for, for the app. Let me just name a few. So overall page structure and improvements. Um, I'm now taking advantage of the viewport to accommodate more details. So better organization uh, on th those pages as well. Uh, I make the, the alpha banner dismissible the position of the toggle between the code view and the live view is now centered on the screen, which is much more related with the section below, the part where you can edit. The, there's a notification which will be displayed uh, every time that the user joins the document and a much more friendly approach uh, regarding the user's um, um, evaluation. I mean, if there's one person online or two persons, there's a, a new way to, to display that, that information. Uh, maybe I can display and just share my screen right now so you can follow through the, the video, which, which will be much better. Yeah, fine for me. Yeah, okay. So, where is the share screen? Share here, okay. 
Please let me know once you can see my screen. Can we can see? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'll play the video and then I can pause it on any any single moment that is quite different from what is being implemented right now. Okay. This is the current structure. Uh, as I said previously, the skinny mar banner might be dismissible, so it's not so prominent on the page. Uh, this, this relation between the toggles and the section underneath, I think it's much better. You can hide one and display the other. And you, you have a message that um, display when was the file created, and every single uh, edition on the file itself will be, will be revealed on that, on that side, on that part. There's the key. Here, there's a, the possibility to, to rename the documents, much more uh, friendly and related with uh, the header itself. This was the notification I was referring to. So I, there's a, one person online, and then someone just entered. You have a notification, number increases. You both are online. You can hover and see which, which person has, has entered. You can yeah, edit your name, set it, and once it will be set, you can just have the option to change it because this is the first time you do this action. It, you don't need to have that as a, a repeat step. So the, on PeerPad right now, there's all this option to set your name, set your name, that's, that's really weird. And then, yeah, just a small change between what is implant, implemented right now. The offline has this uh, dot associated with the gray area. And yeah, I was just taking advantage for, of the, the screen and try to accommodate everything a bit better and well organized. Right now, uh, another detail that I'm working on, it's the, um, the history. I just started like uh, half an hour ago. And yeah, you have a new, new icon here, which is the version history itself. And then a drawer will appear. You can sh uh, show changes on the document itself, uh, just like Google Docs does it, like with a um, highlight, color highlight between any user. Imagine that, okay, this version uh, was changed by Satazor. You will have like a, a rectangle with this color and then just like GitHub uh, does when you uh, add or remove something. Yeah, just try to accommodate those relations of colors with the changes itself. And yeah, for now that's that's it. It's a two-day work. So, <laughs> any comments? Any questions? <laughs> I have one question, uh, which is um, you probably didn't uh, actually started it yet, but um, we, have you thought about uh, having an indicator um, for each peer so that you know yeah, that they actually, have the, last, the latest changes that you made? Yeah, actually, you can see here, because I'm not revealing my indicator, but once you edit the file, you, you can see in the here, in, in the bottom, last edited a few seconds ago by Sarazor, and then the, the type indicator, it's right here. Oh, I, I don't mean the, the, type, the type indicator, I mean the, um, the propagation of the changes. So let's oh, say that yeah. we have five, like everyone on this on this call are editing these documents, yeah. and perhaps Pedro is having a slow connection or is momentarily offline. Um, I want to know if my changes were propagated to everyone, and if if it doesn't, who, who uh, didn't have the, the changes? That okay. I made. Okay. That that will meet the the last two two bullet points that I placed on CrickPad, which is the persistency, the yeah. data. Okay, uh, let me just stop the share screen, which is, where is it? Here, okay. So yeah, uh, I'm locked on the, it's clear that where data is persisted and it's clear when data, sorry, where data is persisted and it's clear when data is persisted. Uh, I have uh, two questions regarding this. It's the first one, it's uh, how does this will influence design? And uh, who, who can I approach uh, regarding these two points to understand what should I do afterwards? I, I, can, I can answer that, uh, well, at least partially. Uh, so I think that there's a bunch of interesting UX 
things we, we, we can do. But I think the really useful thing is, like Andres said, to know um, does Pure X have my, my latest changes? Uh, that's one indicator that is useful when we're collaborating to know uh, uh, to know that. And the other is, is this persisted on, if I close my laptop and I give the link URL to the, to the pad to someone else, will they get the, the, the latest uh, changes? Um, okay. So the, those, those are the two, I think the two main ones, yeah. uh, which we can, we can, uh, one, uh, we can, uh, the first one we can, I think we can already uh, extract from, from currently, we can expose that in, in, in the PeerPad, sorry, a PeerStar app uh, API. And the last one uh, is hopefully a consequence of, of the persistence, uh, uh, of the persistence solution that, that we, we, we do. Um, and I think I think those are, are the, the, the 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 interesting ones. The another another pattern that that I I thought of um, could be interesting, but this is up for discussion. And and I, uh, is is like are my changes like propagated to more than half, for instance, of my of my membership? And this is maybe useful or half like fifty percent is like uh, as good as any. Uh, I'd say. I mean, arbitrary number here, or or everyone, for instance, everyone in, in the collaboration. If we're just to collaborating, fifty percent is just is just me. Yeah. So um, something to, to to keep in the back of your of your heads. I think the first the first one is really, first two are really uh, important. The last one, maybe uh, in the absence of of real persistence, maybe something that is interest interesting to have as an intermediary. Uh, step like probability of, of of being persisted is is higher so that's that's something that people will uh, you are you pattern that is not not well defined because people are, are used to centralized uh, uh, yeah. applications it's, a new well, it's, it's saved it's saved and and and, and they, they 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 can trust the, the, the saving that, that's, not a, that's not that's uh, not any kind of option this like the save moment when even CreepPad does it, right? Once you change every, everything, it will just appear saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Creep, CreepPad is, 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 uh, is centralized. It's, it's encrypted, but it's, it's centralized. Okay. Um, I will, I will uh, give my opinion, if, uh, if, if possible, which is we, we should think about the, uh, the points that Pedro raised um, as possibly a uh, packed solution uh, instead of uh, resolving each one separately. So this is something that, uh, as Pedro said, uh, doesn't happen in centralized world because in centralized worlds, uh, we just have a server and things are persisted there. And once you get a confirmation that it's persisted, it's all fine. So it's just one, um, one, one thing to worry about. But we are, when we are dealing with the decentralized, uh, there's two options uh, or three. We, we, we either have um, as, uh, persistence disabled, and uh, by persistence disabled, I mean there's no, um, uh, like a node persisting the data and, and the the data persisted by the peers themselves. And there's also another scenario, which is having both combined, which is both peers and, and both a dedicated node to persistent, persistence. Um, and there's another scenario, which is uh, just uh, the persistence nodes and you are alone uh, editing the document. Uh, so I think all these three things should be combined in a, in a new YWAX pattern that not only will, will work for uh, peer start, uh, peer peer path, sorry, but also for discussify and, and other um, other other interfaces uh, as well, or other apps as well. So don't, don't we don't really need to repeat uh, the um, or or make different why approaches for these kind of problems. We should look into developing a unified approach to all of these and replicate and reuse that uh, yeah, across, uh, yeah. across applications. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this this the reuse can 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 be um, can be in code or can be in just just in, in the pattern where we can experiment with 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 peer pattern and see what works and what, yeah, what doesn't. 
Uh, but but I, I I agree, and it's very exciting to like yeah, it's a good starting really, point to explore to explore these patterns, these new patterns that are that are uh, emerging. Uh, I think also we, we can see what what other apps are doing, like there is textile for photos, there is a bunch of other things. If they provide this feedback mechanism or not, and if they don't, uh, what's what's the like the the, the builder's uh, opinion on 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 this? Like bring bring more people into the conversation. I think it, it could be also uh, useful because they, they they may have different different uh, requirements and and we all. We want to surface those those UX patterns into the the API that we're going to provide on on Peer, on Peer Star App and then and other other solutions. Uh, we, we but but we well uh, we want to accommodate uh, um, want to grow make make, make the, the UX patterns uh, uh, grow. So we, so for instance, and well defined. We, yeah. Yeah, we can. We can. Uh, I mean, as long as we expose the correct, uh, the correct events on, on 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 the API, I think people then can implement different different patterns. I mean, you can you, if if you're depend on, on <laughs> depending on the type of collaboration that that you're having, uh, you can have different uh, requirements. If it's just photo sharing, uh, eventually consistent thing that takes a long time. If it's text, it's more real time, a more of a real time thing. Uh, if it's uh, Git, so uh, as Dirk, Dirk is working on on a, a GitHub-like thing, probably different, a uh, bit of different requirements. Um, so I think we, um, yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but um, just to point out that the persistent part um, is is running on a node that that is itself another peer correct uh, the current solution uh, the yeah. current solution that we have for that's uh, for peer star app uh, it's that um, there there is a decentralized approach the Dirk is is for instance i think is more of a fan of a, of a of a decentralized approach and then there is the, the more cent well, not, not centralized uh, like like you you pay for persistence or you have someone uh, age you on persistence uh, uh, or you set up as a service that helps you on doing the, the persistent part for for your collaborations, for instance. Uh, so we have these these two different uh, uh, approaches, strategies for for doing persistence, which I think is, uh, are two valid uh, approaches. Uh, so to we'll, and basically they implement they will surface two different UX patterns. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, and that, that's it for me. I had, I, had, I had one more question or comment, which is, uh, you uh, you're pointing out the uh, sort of doing the the text highlighting for who made what changes, um, and I was wondering if you have any thoughts or just that you you may run into issues with the the Delta CRDTs because when you squash them, you're not going to know who. You may not know who made the changes, or if you did, then you'd be missing signatures. Missing signatures may be okay, but you you're gonna you may lose that data as well. Because like if I make an a, if I add an A and you add a B and they get squashed together and adding A B, then it's only gonna be the squasher whose text color shows up. I don't know how we feel about that, but just something I wanted to to bring up. Yeah, I think we we can Sorry. overlook. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. No, it's it, just just the saying that that there's options in in. Uh, so I, I was just, yeah. That that was one of of my points against the Delta CRDTs initially. Uh, was well, what about history? What about authorship? And but the thing is that that you can control. Uh, well, you have to control it at the edges, but you can't control whether to 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 merge the the deltas or not. So it's kind of a choice, like a trade-off. If you want to keep, you can keep history up to a certain point, and then just squash the the the, the rest going going back. We have we have a bunch of of options. Also, we can embed, like, we can do well. Uh, we can embed some history, like a side channel, if you will, not in in terms of uh, like a, a side CRDT. Uh, with with history that is causally consistent with with, uh, with the other one, which will resemble more of uh, an operation by CRDT. Uh, there's a bunch of of, 
Yeah, there's a bunch of options. I just wanted to like surface that it was gonna play into the UX stuff. That, when we yes, get there. that's 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 a uh, that's a real concern. That was a, I was uh, trying to to reply, but I had, I had seen a detail today that which is the snapshot concept for any change that is created on a document, where you can like create a stack of this was changed today, but inside of today you have a. Another level of history inside of a day. Imagine you you, cre you create more than just one level than history, and then you can s almost save it and then just um, continue with an other change. Yeah, it's a bit messy, but it works. Right. Um, I think we we'll have to do some some research on 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 that. Um, it's it uh, seems to me like uh, like we could have. Uh, the delta compression will will have to obey those rules if you want like have like uh, very coarse grain for uh, the last month and less more fine grain for the last uh, week or and very uh, character based grain for the the very recent stuff uh, but that that's that's a lot of that's some research that has to be done on 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 how to implement delta cities on on this way um that's i haven't seen it done anywhere in terms of of the of the academic research um any more questions for andre no so dirk uh you're up cool um so yeah as, as you guys have uh, mentioned i've been working on trying to implement a kind of proof of concepts for persistence um and firstly i just want to say thank you everyone who like inputted and gave comments and stuff she made some really nice diagrams and stuff and a bunch of people put in comments uh so thank you for that work so um there's sort of like a lot of different variables and a lot of way of, ways of doing this so i decided to choose something very specific and implement it as a proof of concept and basically the scenario is that a bunch of people are making changes to some CRDT, let's say it's a PFAD document. Then everyone goes offline and then someone comes online again or someone new and they need to be able to see all of everything that's happened or at least the current state of the document. So um, as Satozor was mentioning, there's kind of like a couple of different options. We could have a persistent service that's a single entity that's running all the time, um, which is kind of what the pinning service is. And then another option is that we can have a service that runs within each node. Um, and so each node has a service that can persist its local changes plus any state that it sees that comes in across the network. So the nice thing about that approach is that you don't have to rely on some external service to be up all the time but it means that you need to have a reliable persistent service that is up essentially all of the time. And so the choice we've gone with for now is IPNS, which is uh, essentially just a naming service. So I'm excited that uh, Aiden is working on multi-writer IPNS because that's gonna take care of a bunch of concurrency problems that we have. Um, so for the time being, there's a couple of strategies that we're using to use single writer IPNS. One of those is basically that we have two levels of IPNS record. One keeps track of all the participants, all the members. And then at the second level, each member has their own IPNS key, which they write their local state and the local updates to. And so when a new member comes in, they get the first level IPNS record, find all the members, and then query each of the members' IPNS keys to get each of the individual states and merge them. The second option we're working on is uh, to elect a leader. And so there's only one node that's persisting everything, basically. And then when that node disappears or goes offline, the other nodes detect that and they elect a new leader. Um, so the nice thing about that approach is that because the state is already being sent around and everyone's sharing the same state at the collaboration level through gossip, uh, we can kind of sidestep having a, every single node having to record the same information. So it's just a single leader. 
So both of these strategies work fine as long as there is no partition in the network. Once we do have a partition, there's a couple of different scenarios, depending if we're doing a leader election or if every node is writing. And I've kind of outlined those scenarios in the PR. So you can have a look and uh, add your comments to it. But the nice thing about the gossip protocol is that it ends up just kind of healing everything in the end. As long as there's a node on each side of the partition uh, comes alive at some stage, you can guarantee the state will converge. Uh, thank you, Dirk. Um, could you could you uh, link the the PR so people then that the yeah. that, that sure, see this yeah. offline can. Thank you. Um, any questions for Dirk? Is, is the PR going to be for discussion for a while? It's not something that's going to be merge straight away, is it? Yeah, for sure. I mean. Uh, I'm kind of like trying out a few different things in that PR. So I see it very much as a work in progress. And yeah, I'd love to hear you guys' comments and uh, kind of suggestions on different strategies. My, my guess is I'll probably end up implementing it a few different ways and then we can try them out and see what works best. Mm -hmm. With the IPNS in JavaScript, I haven't really tried it yet. It, it, my understanding is it only works to one node or something. It doesn't. Yes, you're right. I, um, thanks for bringing that up. I forgot to mention that at the moment, IPNS will only work uh, locally, essentially. It's for any anyone who's sharing the store, the data store within IPNS, which is anyone who's on the same host. Mm -hmm. um, but as I understand it, they're, they're working on connecting up IPNS with the DHT as well as IPNS with PubSub. Mm -hmm. Can you speak more to that, Pedro? Yes, uh, the, the JSIPFS and the P2P team are, are working on that. Um, so that between this week and, and next week, they they aim to have the, the DHT uh, sorted out, and then they can link the the, the IPNS to the, the DHT um, quite easily. Uh, I think uh, after after that, um, and so so there, there's the, there's this whole DHT endeavor um, that I can link you to. Um, I have to find it first. Uh, there's a there's a like an awesome endeavor which is a name that JSIPFS at least teams uh, describe like things that span multiple issues and pull requests. The DHT part two awesome endeavor is is that 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 last uh, step required for DHT to be to be usable on JS JSIPFS and from then on, as I said, uh, IPNS on that that uses the the DHT. Oh, before that, they also are implementing IPNS gossip through um, IPNS gossip through PubSub, I believe. That's also a thing that the, they're actively working on. So yeah, it's it's looking at it's a hard it's a hard blocker for you, I, I believe, there, right? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, let's say it's a hard blocker for this current implementation of uh, the persistent service, but um, I'm kind of still in the experimentation stage. So, you know, it's possible that we might even go with a solution that doesn't use IPNS. It would be nice if we could use it, but. So, uh, sorry, I just kind of disconnected there a little, but um, my, part of what I gathered when I was talking to people last week was that there's there's perhaps this thought where um, IPNS is is sort of public in the sense that uh, you're trying to like broadcast information to the world, so like a website where there's a single writer and then they update it and then that data gets propagated out, and then you start getting into questions of how do I get a random person on the internet to refresh my entry in the DHT. Um, and then there's perhaps another model, which is more like what we're talking about, where you actually know who the peers you're talking to are. Um, so I, I, I kind of feel you in that IP, multi-writer IPNS feels, feels better because it feels like it's the naming system. Let's just have this multiple naming system thing. Um, and, but it, it's just, there's this idea that I'm, I'm 
I'm still processing right now about whether it makes sense to use something else because we're not really trying to broadcast our information to everyone. We're more trying to sustain it for this group that already knows about each other. Um, that may be overly limiting, but uh, it's, it's one idea. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think it would be nice if someone who has never been part of the group can come online and, uh, and, and, and retrieve the state for this particular case. So in that sense, I think we do want it to be sort of publicly available. Yeah, I, I guess to, to clarify, what I meant is uh, there's some sort of external, we'll call it state, there's some sort of external state that has to get to you anyway as a function of um, me sharing with you, right? Especially if we're using encryption and I need to get you an, an encryption key of some sort. Uh, or or just let you know that, by the way, this file has been shared with you in the same way that Dropbox or whoever, like they send you an email letting you know there's a new file. So there may be some sort of external information that can be embedded in, in that method. Um, and I think that that, you know, uh, it can't see the air quotes, but that external method that I'm talking about should eventually be part of IPN, like be part of the protocol. Um, with data that's stored on IPFS, whether that looks like, you know, sort of internal like email over IPFS or some sort of basic chat um, over IPFS that lets you know, hey, there's this new file. Or, or similarly, if I want to like kick someone off a document, if I want to do revocation, saying, okay, I can't change the IPNS key, but I can point you at this new IPNS key for this new group that's minus the person I just kicked off. And you use your sort of internal email to say, hey, here's the new key. Um, let's, let's, do, let's do this whole thing again, but like without Pedro this time. Uh, that, that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's tricky, but I think there's, there's like enough information flow around that um, we may not want to use IPNS except when we have to. For instance, if we, you may actually want for things like uh, access control groups, the last writer win semantics of IPNS. Um, so I don't know where the, how, what the exact right way to get the multi-writer in is, but it may not be in exactly the same, we'll call it developer interface as like, you know, instead of key value, it's key multi-value. It may be something that looks a little different. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And I I know. We can talk about it more, more offline, but that was, that was sort of the idea I wanted to surface. You're right. I think that makes sense. And I, I agree that it's, we have to be careful not to like, you know, change IPNS into something that works for us, but then doesn't work for everyone else. So it's got to be a little bit more future proof. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, any more questions for Dirk? Uh, just one one thing. Um, I have a quick um, quick look on the on the pull request and um, uh, just just to to see if if I'm correct. The current implementation allows uh, people or developers to. Um, add new persistent uh, implementations or strategies uh, because I, I've seen uh, there's a mem in memory implementation and there's another one that, that uses IPNS. Um, so developers can just add uh, new persistent uh, implementations because there, there's a common interface, right? Yeah, um, so the way I wrote it, I, I've tried to break it out conceptually. So you have what I call persistence, which is really, uh, content addressable persistence, meaning IPFS. And then there's naming, which is how you actually refer to the head um, with exactly that idea that we can experiment with different strategies. So I'm using the memory persistence and memory naming just for testing at the moment. And then I have written uh, IPFS as kind of like the part implementation of the, the, the content addressable persistence and IPNS is the hard integrate uh, implementation of the naming. But yeah, I'd like to try with a few different kinds of strategy there. For example, 
we might want to use a different naming strategy that supports multi-ride in a more natural way. So yeah. Yeah. Even like uh, if if um, if a particular application wants to go for a, a centralized approach um, for a specific uh, use case, uh, it will be good to just implement the interface and and specify the the strategy, uh, and it will just work out and, and call the functions of the implementation. And if it's well done, it it will just work out for everyone. Good idea. Good okay, idea. Yeah. This is more like a feature proof in the sense that it allows us to um, add new strategies uh, that we might not uh, uh, be sure about them uh, right now, but uh, we could ex experiment them with them by just uh, providing an option. Hey, this is a persistent instance uh, that has these methods and the underlying peer star just calls them and it will work out. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And in particular for the naming side of things, because uh, at the moment, IPNS, at least in the Go implementation, is is kind of struggling performance-wise. So I think it would be good to experiment with different stuff there and allow clients to choose. I think this, this whole persistent um, problem that we are trying, persistence problem we're trying to solve is, is, uh, is a lot of, uh, is, is, is complex. There's a lot of options to, to go into. Um, for instance, I, I didn't mention that, um, and, and mentioned the, the, the thing about uh, using, uh, not using IPNS. And immediately I thought about, um, if, if you think about documents that you share between your friends or, or colleagues, uh, you already know them. Um, and if, if they provide um, a storage that is persistent and is always online, you can always uh, retrieve the latest state for, for of them and merge all together uh, using the delta CRDTs uh, join uh, mechanism um, just to you know to to merge all the state of your uh, of the people that are that are working on the document and it will work out. You don't need to have like a single um, source of truth of the state. But as you mentioned, as you, as you mentioned, there's a, a strategy. Uh, this, this is an, another strategy, and we might want to experiment with other uh, strategies that we, we uh, aren't um, uh, think about uh, right now. And I think that will be good to add into the um, the, peer, uh, the peer star uh, interface. Yeah, I agree with that. Maybe, do you want to make a comment on the PR? I think that's a really good point. Just, just to, to mention something, um, there's a project that, um, belongs to the DIF, DIF uh, Foundation, Decentralized ID Foundation, which is essentially a storage, a storage service for, um, that each user can run on its own machine. And of course, there will be service providers where people can host uh, there, or you can run on your computer, whatever. And if you think about what, what Edin said, it could be a, a strategy. Um, so, you have this storage that each user that um, edited the document or belongs to the document um, is reliable and always online. You can just query uh, the latest state and pull in and merge the state together. That will be a perfectly valid solution. Of course, it won't be using IPNS or IPFS capabilities and so on. It will probably be using, um, I, I don't know, something like uh, HTTP and um, and some key value storage underneath to store the, the, the information. But it is essentially centralized because every, every peer um, provides a storage to, to um, retrieve and store state. So the state comes from the people and not from a centralized um, and, uh, service or something like that. Yeah, it makes me think that uh, the way that we use IPFS at the moment in peer star is uh, we're really only just using a small part of it, right? Is that right, Petra? Basically, just the yeah, we're just, we're just using the uh, lip P2P and pub sub, which is still a P2P thing. Uh, we're just exposing IPFS because some apps require uh, IPFS itself, so they don't have to build uh, an IPFS node. That's that's correct. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, I wonder if you know down the track we could uh, we could make all of these components kind of pluggable. I think there's there's a, a lot of room for experimentation first, and then and then we, we, we can see what works, and then well well and also what what the interface uh, the API uh, is is I think it will coalesce uh, coalesce over time. Um, 
I think it's um, yeah. We we but obviously yeah. We can we can have multiple multiple providers um, for for persistence, which is like yeah, it's a um, it's a service, right? Um, just another thing that I, I, I remembered, and I, I think that Marco uh, already already speaks about this with me, uh, but I, I've never shared with with you guys. Um, so the idea is that um, if you think about how you, how you connect to people, you have your friends, and the friends um, your friends have also their friends, and their friends has also their friends, and so on. So imagine if um, essentially each each person will be able to provide um, storage, okay, a uh, small quota, of course, for um, each of your friends or partial list of friends, and even uh, a second level deep uh, of your friends of your friends. So if, if this was possible and it existed nowadays, uh, we could eventually uh, create a persistent implementation around this concept, concept where each user provides their storage uh, and, and their storage will be used to host stuff for for other other users as well, or the friends of, of, of them. Um, essentially, this will actually be good because it wouldn't require any any you know external providers or storage that is running on Amazon or um, uh, anything else. So it will be using probably a PFS underneath to provide the storage and store the, the data. Uh, but we will, it will be a, a good idea. And this is, of course, tied with the identity concept that, um, that uh, we have been thinking about in PureStar. Um, but imagine that when you create your identity, you could connect to friends via those interface. And when, once you connect, you're, you're essentially able to provide storage code for, for them. And um, this will provide um, the, or it will guarantee that the data will somewhat be accessible uh, 20, 24 hours seven. So this is just an idea. Of course, it's not something for now. It's just something that I wanted to, um, you know, point out so that the current uh, persistent layer that uh, is being developed developed allow allow us to experiment with these future concepts of um, of the upcoming years that we'll probably tackle on. Um, yeah, there, there's. Uh, Victor uh, Grichenko is, is in the call. Just just pasted the link to a paper from '97 from Ward Cunningham, which is uh, an, uh, an architecture for this thing that that your 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 describe a folk memory or something. Um, there's also like prior art, or well, more recent prior prior art to this, which is the well, not not exactly this, but. There's scuttlebutt, um, secure scuttlebutt. You have the friends and they have pubs. Pubs persist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so some of some of this. It's not exactly this, but but you can like persist data for a friend of a friend, for instance. Yeah, um, exactly. And and you, you can you can do this. Uh, there's and I, I remember there's a, a P2P file sharing social network thing where you uh, where you guarantee that. The, like you offer to enter the network, you offer uh, uh, storage. But the thing is, like for uh, uh, IPFS, uh, Fal Falcoin solves the, the proof that, that you provide this storage, right? So that, that's that's the whole uh, goal of the project is is to for you to prove that that you provided the storage. Uh, so the proof uh, here is, I think, um, if you require proof, if you so if you you're, you're traversing. Uh, layers of, of friendship, you start losing the trust, and then, and then you, you start needing 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 proofs, um, yeah. which it's is a fault uh, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I just mentioned it. Uh, mentioned it's just to open um, possibilities in the future, and not and create some kind of uh, interface for the persistent layer that could oh, yeah. be easily iterated on and. Um, it, it of course will be solid, so that uh, different implementation could be. Uh, Easily implemented, but um, it's something that we probably want to have uh, from the from the start going. I think I will I will comment on the pull requests. Okay. Cool. There's there's one thing which I think is just using the opportunity to like collect information on what some of the use cases people are looking for are, right? Um, I mean, like one that happens to appeal to me but may not appeal to other people is. 
I would have been reasonably happy with a cloud, with like having Amazon store my data instead of doing it peer to peer because the encryption would protect me and all of that. The problem is that if this service that's connecting to Amazon shuts down and I'm not using IPFS, then I can't move my data somewhere else, right? So that's like a very minimal server usage, right? That's like a very minimal transition away from server that just happens to have a bonus. But there are other, there are other mechanisms, but that's gonna, or other strategies, but that I think is talk to people. So for, for us to just like, you know, when you see people, talk to them and, and see if we can gather more information about what people want to use this for. This is sort of a broad thing, but I think uh, an architecture that I'm seeing that might evolve out of, out of some of this work is like we have these sort of like fat clients that have like IPFS and all sorts of features built into the client and they're completely independent and you can basically do full peer-to-peer -peer networking with it. But at the same time, everybody wants to use their phones and they don't, they actually sort of want thin software on their phones, but there's, concepts such as service workers, where you can sort of have your thin client, but then you bundle a lot of the stuff into the service worker. And we might want to do that because we have multiple tabs in there. But then you've got things like Cloudflare is using the service worker model on in the cloud. So you can use the service worker API and put stuff into the cloud. I'm sort of wondering if you can distribute, like bundle, build your app with the service worker model but then have maybe additional service, like cloud service workers that are personal to you, your web browser, but they run detached in the cloud somewhere. I and mean, this is this sort of crazy, crazy talk, but I'm, I'm sort of thinking this sort of model would actually make a lot of sense. I don't think it's that crazy. I mean, I think that's kind of what Infura is doing, right? For the IPFS. Yeah, I, I think, I think I, I, it's it's mandatory to to have um, it like 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 that in the in a mobile world because we don't have that much storage and capacity to to you know host stuff and 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 uh, if you think about the websites that you have visited on the on the iPhone, just imagine if if it's decentralized right now, it will be um, your storage will be completely full and and we will have to have a strategy to evict uh, all the entries or you use the entries and so on. So I think having a thin client like um, like uh, Jim said, uh, it's it's something that we should think about it. So as as I said, this this is a complex topic. We need to. I think we need to come up with a document um, somewhere to to point out um, our our requirements, our concerns, and um, construct some solutions that will solve um, different points. And some others will will probably don't solve the, the, some of those problems. And perhaps we could converse into something. Um, I think it will, be, it will be good. Just one one, one last thought. I, I I agree. Uh, yeah, we should. We should. I mean, we're, we're way over time, so we should probably wrap this up. But uh, uh, just this one, one, one last final point is offline first. Uh, think clients and offline first are uh, at war. Yeah. So um, it's all always this, and, and local storage capacity is increasing, so the edges are getting fatter. Um, but still, the, but but also the apps are getting more demanding. So. Um, yeah, yeah. My point was that this discussion that we're having right now is very productive and very, very interesting. I think we should just uh, persist, it, persist it somewhere so that we can we can discuss it um, and 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 you know have a snapshot of the discussion somewhere. Um, Andres, because... uh, are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah I, I can do that. I can do like, like uh, I'll have to review the, the, the video and then, and then just, just uh, put, a, 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 um, put a snapshot of this conversation on, on, on that, on GitHub, on a GitHub issue. And then we, we can, we can take, take off from that. I think it's like a long running discussion, probably it belongs to IPFS notes or, or research or, or, or something like that. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's really, really valid. So two, two takeaway points, right? So one is your, your, your comments on Onderx work and, and the, the, the general, <clears throat> sorry, generalizing interface for the, the persistent service. And the other one is, is like evolution of this in, a, in, in, in uh, not, not a new future.
right? Cool. Um, any last comments, uh, messages for our, <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up. We're way over time. Thank you for, for coming. Um, so we'll keep in touch uh, throughout these two weeks. If not, see you in two weeks, right? right. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.